In this video, we're going to go ahead and install Google Play services in our Motion VMs. Now, Google Play services are going to be required for working with GCM. GCM is Google Cloud Messaging, and it's basically the push, uh, push notification platform. So with GCM, we'll be able to have the applications get notified immediately when things happen, such as a new message gets received or a contact gets received or anything like that. Now, the support of that actually happening comes from the server itself that I wrote that sends the appropriate API calls. However, you need Google Play services installed on your device in order to actually work with this stuff. So it's not enough to just install Google Play services in your dependencies of your Gradle, uh, uh, Gradle file. Instead, you have to make sure the device itself has them installed. Now, it's usually not an issue for 99% of the time, and especially considering the fact that I'm going to write some code that'll actually prompt the user to install Google Play services if they don't have them installed already. However, on the Guinea Motion VMs, you have to go through a couple more steps to get them installed. So pretty much what I'm doing is I'm just going to show you, I'm going to walk you guys through um, following the steps in this Stack Overflow answer. So you'll want to definitely track the Stack Overflow answer down in order to get these download links. And you can do it quite easily by searching how to install Google Play services in Guinea Motion. So once you do that, go ahead and grab these files. Here are the files you're going to need. You're going to need the ARM translator translation installer. So you can do that by coming over here and waiting a couple seconds and it'll download. I'll close that tab out because I already have it downloaded. Next up, you're going to want to get the Google Apps for your Android version. Now, I'm running a Guinea Motion in uh, 4 and 5, so I have to download these guys, which is the first link here, and I can do that by going to the um, uh, uh, Cyanjamod. I don't know why I've never been able to pronounce that word. Anyway, you can do this by going over to their wiki and grabbing this right off of GitHub. So just grab the CM12.1 if you're if you're wanting to test on Android 4. If you're wanting to test on Android 5, the guy provides a separate link that you can click on. And it's just one of these standard download sites. Um, you can just click the Begin Download button right here. It'll show you a list of mirrors and you can grab it downloaded. Anyway, um, now that we have the files downloaded, hopefully, which I do, they're right here. Let's go ahead and get them installed. I'll do my um, Nexus 5 first, or my Android 5 device first. So the way these pack these zips are made is they're ready to be dumped straight onto Android. And Guinea Motion has this cool drag and drop feature we can use. So the first thing you need to install is the Guinea Motion ARM translation tool. So I'm just going to click and drag over there, and it'll say File Transfer in Progress. And then I'll go ahead and I'll select OK. And it wants me to restart the device, so I'll go ahead and do that too, I guess. I'll just um, come up here, hold down the power button if I can find it um, right there, and select power off. While that's restarting, I guess I can go ahead and put my Android 4 device over here and drag and drop it on there too. All right, so my Android 5 device is off, so I'm going to go ahead and um, click OK on that. I'll go ahead and restart my Android device. Now this one needs to be restarted, so I'll go ahead and stop him from running. Just hold that down and select power off. Make sure it properly gets shut down. Alright, so that guy shut off, and now the Nexus, uh, or the version 5 is coming up. He's maybe taking a couple seconds to start. Might have to do with the fact uh, that I've been, or was working on the other device at the same time. Uh, I might go ahead and just cancel out of this, and um, or maybe he'll start. All right, I'll go ahead and rest or start the video back up when everything's loaded. Now I'm back. So now for the Android 4 device, I'm going to want to grab these guys right here. So I'm just going to click and drag that over onto that. And that's going to have its file transfer in progress. And then for the Android 5 device, I'll go ahead and drag that over there. And that'll have its, its file transfer in progress. And these are kind of big files, so they will take a moment. Um, basically, I'm just going to go through the exact same steps that I went through before. I'm going to accept all the prompts, and then I'm going to restart the device after the file transfer is done. So I'll bring, I'll be back once that is finished. Um, what a word of warning: when this uh, gets finished, once uh, you restart your device, you're going to get a lot of crashes, and I'll show you guys how to fix that here in a second once um, all of these guys are all transferred and restarted. So I'll see you guys in a second. 
Okay, I'm back. I did have to download a different version of the G apps. Unfortunately, it looks like the one that was linked by the original poster of that answer doesn't actually work with the ROM that I had with this particular Getting Motion uh, emulator. Might have worked with yours. If it doesn't, and you really want to use Android 5 for this, uh, check out the comment section of that answer, and there's a link all the way down here for Google Apps for Android 5.1. And then down here, you can go ahead and grab it. Bit of annoying um, CAPTCHA to solve, but it's not the end of the world. Anyway, so that's my Google Android, or my Nexus 5, uh, Android 5 device booting up after installing that. Let's go ahead and unlock my, my 4. So what should happen now is I should have my Google services somewhere in the device. Or Google Play services, anyway. I wonder if it didn't install. Oh, go away. Hmm. Oh well, looks like this one installed. Let's go ahead and open up. And okay, now we're back. We're back to crashing. Um, let's ignore four for now. I'll figure that out later. Um, let's go ahead and fix this. So to fix this, we need to go into the Play Store and it's gonna ask us to log in with our Google account is the first thing it's gonna do. So it's checking account and it says sign in. So next, I recommend using some sort of testing account for this. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this off screen here for obvious reasons. And the, the device is running really slowly right now, but that's just because it's all freaked out that it doesn't have quite the version of Google Play services that it needs. But by getting it bootloaded onto the device, we have the opportunity to update. So we'll go ahead and um, get logged in and accept the terms of service and privacy policy. And I should be logged in. I'll move it over once I verify that. While that's doing that, I'm going to try this one more time. I'm going to move... Um, oh, you know what? It's because I downloaded the Lollipop, I think, instead of the KitKat version. That's probably why. Anyway, let's get Android 5 to work first. Um, I'm not going to back up my devices anything because that would be silly um, from a test device. Okay, now that we're in the Play Store, what we our, our goal here with this is to update our Google... Um, uh, Google Play services. So I think this should be the one that we need. So we'll go ahead and we'll accept that and we'll have that download. While that's doing that, I'll open up the other page and show you probably where I messed up here. If I go over here and I click back on this, um, the first link for a up to Android 4.4.4, .4, I think what I really wanted on GitHub, let's see, so that's um, gapps 5.1, which I don't want. It looks like I want this one right here. Um, and I'm going to download that through ItVens, I guess. Notice how I don't want that one. That's Lollipop. Notice how it says GApps uh, KitKat right there. And we'll go ahead and we'll get that installed. Anyway, so this now installed. Um, I don't know what happens if you... Oh, it's this Google now. And it might be working at this point. So if I go back to Play Store, make sure that you don't have any app updates because app updates is really what you're looking to fix here. Uh, you can also search for Google Play services and see if that shows up. So, um, or maybe it doesn't anymore. Either way, the other Google Play services come up like Google Play Mer Music and all that stuff. But the point is, is I'm probably going to do at this point is restart the app. I've done this quite a few times, honestly. Um, and unfortunately, each time is slightly different. Like I said before, really the goal here is to update Google Play services and get the latest version from the actual store. Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, copy over um, my KitKat onto the KitKat device. So I'm just going to hop into my downloads folder and I'm just going to drag and drop that zip I just downloaded. While I'm doing that, I'm going to restart my Lollipop device. I didn't want to do that. I'm going to hold down that, do power off, and let's see here. Okay, so now I'm going to drag and drop that, that file I just downloaded, the gapskk, onto this device right here. And we'll let this file transfer sit. While the file transfer sits, I'm going to relaunch my Lollipop device. 
Again, it's a little bit finicky. You have to find the right um, set of things to download. Uh, definitely, uh, uh, it's yeah, it's a bit of a difficult thing to do. But once you get it working, you only have to do it once per virtual device. The only problem is that sometimes you end up destroying a virtual device for whatever reason, and that causes you to have to do this process again, which is why I did this a handful of times, but I happened to have the the correct versions downloaded at the time, so it was just a matter of doing that and kind of waiting around for Google Play services to start. Now, I figure if I don't get any errors on, the, um, on this guy right here, on Lollipop, if I don't get any crashes, I think that means I'm pretty much good to go with Google Play services and I'm ready to start writing the code. Now remember, you don't have to do this if you're de uh, developing on a physical device. So maybe you might want to skip this and just use a physical device, but obviously having two devices to test with at once would be very nice for this sort of thing. I'll go ahead and pause the video and I'll resume when both of these things are done. And we're back. Now hopefully it actually for reals installed this, and it did. You can tell with it crashing multiple times over again. So I'm going to hop over as fast as I can before I get um, a bunch of errors. And now it's going to want me to add a Google account now. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to say new, or whoops, not new. I'm going to go ahead and say existing. And um, just like before, I'll do this off screen. And you kind of have to fight with the little dialogues um, that keep on saying things keep on, on failing. It, it's a, it's, it's a non-ideal solution, but I did at least want to document the struggle so you guys knew that you were uh, on the right track with however you guys are approaching this. All right, I think I might have gotten past the login screen. Did I get past the login screen? Oh, it looks like I did. Yay. Um, to dismiss those dialogues really quickly, you can hit an arrow key, then just hit enter. Oh, come on, or just click really, really fast. Oh, and it completely died. Okay, let's get back in there. You know, I hear Getting Motion used to have these... Um, I don't care. Uh, I used to have these installed by default, which would be really nice. All right, now I'm going to come over here, and fortunately there's an update all button, so I'm going to quick th click that as quickly as possible and accept all these ridiculous permissions. Well, not really ridiculous, but... So, or uh, we can go ahead and try searching again for Google Play services. Because it seems like none of those things really wanted to download. Um, so what happens if we just update this guy? And it's downloading. Okay, so it seems that if I just went to Google, Google Incorporated, I was able to just download that and um, install it. Again, this is probably not the most exciting video on the planet, but for anybody accidentally clicking on videos, let's exit out of that real fast. Okay, now that I got that to install, let's see if I can install or update the other apps as well. So let's go ahead and accept all these permissions. And okay, so now that I got Google installed, it seems that the other ones will also get installed. So I'm still fighting with those dialogues, but I think that once all these things update, we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and clear out all that stuff. And um, I guess at this point, I'm just gonna be fighting with dialogues while these update. So I'll go ahead and pause. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and do a restart. So I'm just gonna hold down this and power off. And when I start back up, if everything is working, I won't get any more errors, and we'll have two devices to test on. Again, non-ideal. I spent most of my te time testing the GCM on physical devices that I had on my desk, but it for obviously for the video, A, I wanted to show you guys this to um, who may not have two devices or may not have a device at all, and B, um, I need to be able to show this working on video. But again, once it works, it's stable. It's just a matter of getting that latest version. All right, it's still starting up, so I'll be back. 
and we're back and it looks like we're still getting some errors so let's hop back into the store and um, so he says Google really wants us to re-update all the stuff we just updated so go I guess go through the process however many times it takes not that fun but sometimes you have to do that all right, things actually seem to maybe have resolved themselves. So I think we're gonna go ahead and end the video here. And if I have any other problems, we'll address them as they arise. But that was a um, 15 minute video of dragging and dropping a couple of zip files onto an emulator. Very exciting stuff. But anyway, in the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at actually putting together all of the required code in order to set us up for push notifications. So yeah, uh, I guess we'll see you guys in the next video.